Good morning, everybody. So today we're going to read a story called On the Day Peter Stuyvesant Sailed into Town by Arnold Nobel. It's one of my favorite stories from this study. And you're going to learn a little bit about why Peter Stuyvesant is so important to New Amsterdam. So on the day Peter Stuyvesant sailed into town, all the people came running to greet him. They shot off a cannon and waited in line so that every last Dutchman could meet him. Here is a picture of New Amsterdam. My friends, Peter said, it is nice to be here, for my voyage was really a long one. I will rule this new land with a very firm hand, and my government will be a strong one. Yes, my government will be a strong one. Peter Stuyvesant stood with a leg made of wood, and he said there is no time to talk now. It's a very fine day, this 11th of May. So I think I will go for a walk now. And into New Amsterdam Peter did go to see all there was to be seen. But he soon wore a frown as he walked up and down. He discovered that nothing was clean. The governor slipped in the mud and the mirror and he said, things are not at all well here. I'm standing in garbage right up to my knees and the air has a very bad smell here. Yes, the air has a very bad smell here. All the houses in town are in need of repair. Peter shouted, I loudly decree it. This whole dirty place is a total disgrace. Good Dutchman, we must beautify it. But the folk of the town went on smoking their pipes, and they said it is best to ignore him. There will soon come a day he will be on his way, like the men who have governed before him. So they don't think Peter Stuyvesant is going to do a very good job, just like all the other governors before him, right? From Broadway to Wall Street, old Stuyvesant stormed. With a tap and a step, he kept walking, while some chickens and ducks made a nest in his hat. And some geese on the path made a squawking. Yes, those geese on the path made a squawking. Then a goat from behind, in a manner unkind, gave Peter a push on his seat. A cow licked his nose, and some pigs chewed his toes, as poor Stuyvesant sat in the street. This new world is a mess, Peter cried in distress. These animals need gates and fences. Take those birds to a cage, Peter shouted in rage. Oh, good Dutchman, let's come to our senses. As his voice rocked the ground with a great booming sound, like a sky filled with thunder and lightning, those good Dutchmen did shake. They cried, make no mistake, this man's temper is really quite frightening. While the citizen stood in a trembling group, Peter cried, here is my proclamation. All you men and you maids, get your brooms and your spades. We must work now without hesitation. Yes, let's work now without hesitation. So they put up new buildings, all sturdy and strong, and they cleaned all the rubbish away. So they're making New Amsterdam look a little nicer. They mended the fences and paved many streets from the top of the town to the bay. They filled up the holes in the walls of the fort for the colony needed protection. And the people agreed they were clever to heed Peter Stuyvesant's careful direction. Some 10 or 12 summers had come and had gone as they worked on the east and the west. Things were going so well, it was soon hard to tell which half of that town was the best. So they were working for 12 summers. And here is what it looks like all pretty. Nice new Amsterdam. Clean. The animals are in fences. The garbage is being picked up. My children, said Peter, we've worked very hard, and I think we deserve relaxation. I feel in the mood for some fun and some food. 
Let us have a big Dutch celebration. Yes, it's time for a big celebration. Each new, I'm sorry, each new Amsterdam nose sniffed the smells that rose in delicious fat clouds to the air. How they gave such delight to each Dutch appetite, all those good things to eat everywhere. Someone asked, will this town stay as small as it is? Well, of course, there was no way of knowing. So they danced until evening, all dizzy and gay, and went home as the darkness was growing. That night, Peter Stuyvesant heard a strange sound, underneath a round moon brightly gleaming. It swept past his door, a great rumble and roar, but old Stuyvesant knew he was dreaming. Okay, this is actually my favorite page of the whole story. Here we have... New York, whoop, as you can see, here's Peter Stuyvesant's house. Yes, Peter Stuyvesant knew he was dreaming. Who would have thought that his dream would become reality? Hmm? Very interesting. All right, hopefully you learned something new about Peter. Okay, bye guys, see you later.